Listeners, do you feel like you're overwhelmed at any time? Do you feel out of control at times? What about when you are nervous and you are presenting? Do you ever hold your breath, but then that makes you go faster? Then that makes you look like you're nervous or not confident? Well, today's Ask Dennis episode is about remember to breathe. Let's discuss. Welcome to Leadership is Changing. Each week, we and our guests provide information and insights through exploring leading change. This is taking your leadership to another level by finding the balance between executive excellence and personal well-being through stories that inspire real change. It's time to adapt in our fast-moving world when leadership is changing with your host, Dennis Giannoutsas. This is welcome to another Ask Dennis episode. It's a freestyle episode where I'm asked a question by our listeners or I share my thoughts, insights, and experience from working with many leaders around the globe. As I said, the title today is about Remember to Breathe. You know what? I'm coming across a lot of people who are putting on a brave face at the moment. They are like the swan or a duck on the lake, and they're on the top, and they're gliding beautifully. It looks fantastic. But down below, those web feet, if I can call it that, are actually going six to the dozen, as we say. They are struggling. They are going fast. They are doing so much. They're working long hours, working really hard, and a lot of them actually could be struggling. Huh. Maybe you might be one of these people that may be able to relate to what I've just shared with you, whether you are one that sort of holds your breath or if you're one that's nervous at times, or you get frustrated, or you hold your breath when you're presenting. You see, if you are like that swan or duck, it's actually really interesting to talk about today in this session. I worked with a group of global leaders last Friday. In fact, I had to do the webinar, a 90-minute webinar with them on influence. In other words, leadership influence. And I introduced them to a model that I use, and um, it was really quite, quite cool. But I also talked about it in there, about the ability to breathe and um, really build things around your resilience, around where you are, and what are you wanting to do to help you cope within a situation. And what was quite interesting was that we talked about leaders being overwhelmed. For some of them, they feel like that they're out of control. And for others, they feel like they're not bringing their best to the, to the role. In other words, they're a game. Nerves tend to sh- uh, start to show and they lack confidence. In fact, that confidence or the lack of confidence starts to show and then they start to self-doubt themselves for some reason or reasons. Now, what is it? What's causing a lot of this? Is it COVID? You know, two and a half years has not been easy for everybody. Less staff available. In other words, we can't find people to recruit, but we still have to run our businesses. We still have to run our teams. We still have to do things. So people are having to cover other people and uh, leaders are having to roll up their sleeves and get into, into some other areas that are not. And it's taking them away from leading and, uh, and actually taking their focus away from where they should be. Some people are working from home. And for some have worked home for two and a half years now and it's been long. You see, people are lacking that people contact or connection. And if there's no community or that no in-person kind of situation, people are finding it hard. Now, in your country, in your area, you might be doing certain things today around people meeting in communities. Some organizations in some countries have no masks. In fact, there's no talk about COVID anymore. But there tends to be one major problem that maybe some of us aren't even thinking about yet, or we are experiencing it, or we are seeing others experience it as well, and it's mental well-being. There are various things that we can do to help out, but here comes a caveat And I want to say that if you feel like you need help with your mental well-being, please, please go and get or ask the right people for help. Go and get professional help. Leaders, here's something I want to say to you as a caution. If you see someone in your team or in other teams who are needing help, don't be the hero. What I'd like you to do and what we all should do is that you and I have a responsibility to make sure that they get the right people around them the professional help around them. We're not psychologists, we're leaders. Yes, we need to know about psychology and how to work with people and so forth, but the psychologists have the right tools and experience in helping people who may be struggling. So if there's one thing I've got to say to you here is that know when it's the right time to hand over someone to the professionals. That doesn't mean you hand over and drop them and leave them. No, you still need to see and be around them to support 
But I think the important thing is, is that we understand that at times we need to hand people over to the professionals. One item that I talk about amongst many is about remembering, well, remember to breathe. And I'm talking about not the breath you just quickly take. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a, a deep belly breath. Now, as I said to you before in other episodes, we've seen sporting teams and high-performing people who do this during a break. They actually are taking two big, deep belly breaths. Why? Because otherwise, on the fight-flight mode. And as I've shared in other episodes about my story around the tumour, there was times when I couldn't breathe properly. In fact, for many years, I was in that fight-flight mode. So from my mid-chest up is where I was breathing from. In other words, it was very much a shallow breath that I had. What I found as well is that being like that, I was always on that fight-flight mode, and it was quite difficult. Deep belly breathing is something I had to go and learn, something they had to teach me again, how to speak again and how to breathe again when that tumour was removed. The deep belly breathing was quite interesting. It took me a little while to get to it and to understand it. In fact, it's a little bit the opposite of what we do. Most people take a breath in and they suck in their stomach where it should be going out. In other words, we're filling the whole cavity up and it sort of blows up like a balloon. So I always put my hand on my belly button and as I start to breathe in through my nose, I always mentally think about my hand on my belly button and starting to fill the lungs, the tanks, up from the bottom upwards. And if you can start to do that, it's quite cool. And you'll start to see your hand rise first as you start to do that. Fill your lungs all the way up to the top. Now, when you say the top, what do I mean? You know, you've got your chest area. If you think about your shoulders, just below your shoulders, your, che- your lungs go all the way up to just about there. So they go up quite high, and we need to fill them up. And um, so breathe through your nose. Then I want you to do is hold it for four seconds. Yep, four. And then slowly release through your mouth out for eight seconds. Slowly do that. Now, at first, you might want to do four seconds to release it and then slowly build up on it as well. But if you can do this two or three times, it's actually going to be quite cool for you to to actually sort of relax a little bit. Now, this is based on my experience. So if you are a person that needs to check with your doctor about breathing activities and exercises and that, please feel free to go ahead and do that. But this is based on my experience and what I've done. And when I work with leaders and we talk about this in different workshops and events and so forth, it's actually quite interesting to see how much they actually grow from it and understand how it can actually help them. And so by what what does it mean or what does it do or how does it help them by actually doing these deep belly breaths? Well, actually, it's going to get oxygen to your brain. And um, what I find is it actually starts to slow things down. It actually makes time slow down. And in, in a way, it actually makes you calm. And those who are the calmest in the room are the ones who are in control. So listeners, next time you feel that you're anxious, frustrated, wound up, nervous, something's not going right, you the conversation's getting a little bit tense with somebody, remember to breathe. It's your friend. That breath can actually help you become calm and take control. Listeners, thanks for joining me on today's Ask Dennis episode. Until next time, bye for now. Thank you for listening to this episode of Leadership is Changing with your host, Dennis Giannoutsas. Each week, we and our guests provide information and insights through exploring leading change, inspiring executives and leaders to adapt and lead a bigger game in a fast-moving world.